Hi, everyone. Welcome to our digital learning adventure. Um, today, we're going to start our plant unit, um, and we're just going to do a little bit of info about plant basics and kind of an overview of different types of plants and when they evolved and the difference between them. So um, we'll start up here with just an overview of what it means to be a plant. So plants are always multicellular, multicellular, eukaryotic, and autotrophic. So I think we all know what multicellular means. It has more than one cell. Um, eukaryotic means that the cells of plants have a nucleus. And they also will have cell walls that are made of cellulose, um, which we talked about in the fall, how that's uh, fiber, plant fiber, that's not digestible to us. And then also autotrophic, which means that they can produce their own food. And for plants, that's always done using photosynthesis. And photo, we know, means light, so they're using light to make their own food. There are other methods of being autotrophic, like um, chemosynthesis, but if you're a plant, you have to use photosynthesis in order to produce your food. Okay, so then there are two main types of plants that we're gonna talk about, um, non-vascular and vascular. And the plants that you usually think about, if you're just picturing a plant in your mind, are vascular plants. Um, Non-vascular plants have um, no vascular tissue, which we'll talk about that in a second. They have no true leaves. They have no stem. Um, they have no flowers and no seeds. So you're probably thinking like, what do they have? Um, they're basically just um, multicellular autotrophic organisms. The example of them is moss. Um, that's really the, and uh, you know, there are many types of mosses, but moss is a non-vascular plant. They're also going to be the most primitive of the land plants, um, which we remember hopefully that word um, from our evolution unit, which means simple, um, more similar to the ancient ancestor organism, um, doesn't have very many like complex traits. That's primitive. Um, vascular plants are plants that you see every day. So these have vascular tissue, which we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, they have leaves, leaves, stems. Um, in some cases, they're trees. Some of them have flowers, sometimes flowers, sometimes seeds, sometimes fruit. So because most of the plants that we know about, you know, fall under vascular plants, it's a lot more diverse. Um, there's a lot of situations where can't say they all have seeds or they all have flowers because they don't, they're a different classification. Okay, before we go any further, let's go over here and talk about vascular tissue. So vascular tissue are just tubes that transport materials around the plant. And actually you have vascular tissue as well. Um, it's your arteries and your veins that transport, you know, nutrients, oxygen, carbon dioxide around your body. Um, and plants have vascular tissue as well, but it's called xylem and phloem. So I did xylem in blue because it transports water. Transports water. Um, and plants move water from the roots to the leaves because um, so the, the plant is absorbing its water from the ground. Even when it rains and the rain is landing on the leaves, 
the plant isn't really absorbing its water from the leaves, it's absorbing its water from the ground um, through its roots, and then moving that water up into um, the leaves of the plant so that it can be used to do photosynthesis, because hopefully you remember that um, water is necessary for the reaction of photosynthesis. Um, one other thing, like going way, way back to the beginning of the year, that's important for this is we, we talked about how water has these special properties, hydrogen bonding, cohesion, um, all that sort of stuff. So xylem usually has to, well, I'll say almost always, has to move against gravity because it's going from roots to the top of the plant. And so the properties of water, like cohesion and adhesion, um, capillary action, where it's sucking upwards like a straw, is really important. Um, and really allows this, this transport to occur. Without it, plants wouldn't be able to do photosynthesis and survive. So just a little flashback connection to that. The other type of vascular tissue is phloem, which you can remember because phloem is for food and it makes the same sound. Um, so phloem transports nutrients slash sugar from the leaves to the roots or a storage organ, um, which would probably be a fruit. And so that's the reason why uh, most of the time fruit is sweet because it's a storage for the, for the sugar that the plant had produced. Um, carrots, potatoes are, are sugar sinks for the plant um, to put the sugar that it made through photosynthesis. Um, and we'll talk more about fruit in a minute when we get to that section, but that's xylem and phloem. Those are the two types of vascular tissue that plants use to survive. Okay, so now let's go back over here and talk about the different types of vascular plants. There's three types that we're gonna talk about. Um, and they're ferns, gymnosperms, and angiosperms. And they go in order of um, increasing complexity and also in order of kind of when they showed up on Earth. So ferns would be the most primitive of the vascular plants. So ferns have leaves, um, but they have no seeds, no flowers, and no fruit. So they're really pretty basic when it comes to plants. So instead of using seeds to reproduce, they are using spores, like we talked about with fungi. And that's also what the moss is, the non-vascular plants um, would use, or they can also be asexual. Um, okay, so gymnosperms are conifers, like pine trees. So they are gonna have seeds have seeds um, stored in cones, pine cones, um, but no flowers and no fruits. Um, and then the last one is angiosperms, which are flowering plants. And they have seeds which are um, stored in the flower and eventually the fruit. Um, so they have actually like an ovary, called an ovary, it's inside the flower. Some plants have multiple ovaries. Um, and that ovary actually becomes the fruit, which is kind of crazy, but that's how it works. Um, have seeds, flowers, and fruits. Um, one thing about this is, that's kind of interesting is the fruits aren't always what you would think of them being. So it doesn't have to be like an apple or a peach or, you know, a fruit that you would regularly eat. Um, some plants, the fruit of them are those helicopter-like spinny. Um, they kind of look like little leaves, but I always call them helicopters. I put a picture of them down here, here, there. Um, this is actually a fruit. So I'll just circle it and say a fruit. Um, coconuts are fruits, um, like sand 
spurs. If you ever go to the beach and you like step in a sand spur, um, those are fruits of plants. And the, the purpose of the fruit is just to transport the seed. And so different plants will have adapted to have different methods of doing that. So coconuts float, they can travel through the water. Um, these helicopters can travel through the wind really nicely. A uh, sand burr can attach onto like the fur of an animal and travel that way. Um, so plants have really, through evolution and natural selection, gotten kind of creative on how to spread their seeds using different types of fruit. Um, and that's also, you know, a benefit of them being sweet that an animal would want to eat them and then spread the seeds, you know, by the, the seeds come out the other end and um, get left behind. Okay, so there we go. That's um, angiosperms. And then angiosperms also branch into two different categories, and that's the monocots and the dicots, um, which are just different classifications of flowering plants, where um, monocots have one embryonic seed leaf. This is the word for, oh no, um, accidentally clicked link. This um, this is a word for an embryonic leaf. Um, monocots have one, and that's why they're called monocots. And dicots have two, which is why they're called dicots. Um, and then you can also tell a monocot from a dicot based on the leaves and the flowers, the number of petals that the flowers have. So if you have some flowers um, at your house, you can figure out whether they're monocots or dicots just by looking at the petals. And um, that's a classification of angiosperms. Okay, very last thing I wanna talk about today is just the order of evolution of plants. We talked about it last week, how green algae is the ancestor. Green algae falls under protus because it doesn't fit into the, into the plant category because it's unicellular. So, but it is the ancestor of all plants. And then we'll have after that, the very first plants to evolve would have been aquatic. Because we know life began in the ocean. And then when it comes to the terrestrial plants or the land, these will all be terrestrial. The first ones are gonna be your non-vascular plants, your mosses, slash non-vascular. Um, and after that, you're going to have ferns and the, the fern relatives, and then gymnosperms and angiosperms. And then I do think it's worth mentioning, of course, that there are tons of other plants, some of them you're going to um, research this week, but that are not on this list. This is just the most basic list that I can give you of different plants and, and their increasing complexity. But there are other ones that we didn't include here. Um, plant kingdom is giant and we're always discovering new species and adding them to the list too. So this is just the, the very basics. Also, I put here for you this cladogram that shows what I just wrote in a list, but in, in a more visual format. So it's showing you that the mosses are the first to evolve. Aquatic plants aren't on this cladogram. And then ferns, and then gymnosperms, and then angiosperms. Um, and then the different traits are going along the, the timeline that show the, the different traits evolving. So you can see mosses don't have vascular tissue, but everything else does. And then this could also say flowers and fruit. Um, this could say cones. Um, and then algae, of course, is the common ancestor of all the plants. And based on this, you could say mosses are the most primitive because they're closest to the common ancestor. Um, they have the least of the evolved traits. Okay, so that's it for today. That's plants basics. Um, look out for a couple more videos coming up about more plant specific stuff, but hope you're having great. If you have having a great week, if you have questions, um, send me a remind or shoot me an email or I'll be available um, during your class time. But Thank you so much. You're doing great. Love you lots. Bye.